fill your thirst beside the river. Wash the journey from your hands. Feel the comfort flow inside you. Come this far, you understand. And welcome to Healing Outside the Box. My name is Rosemary Lachance, and I'm a Reiki energy healer and a spiritual advisor. And I'm Tracy Crampton, and I'm an energy practitioner. We are dedicated to providing you with food for thought information and answers to all modalities of alternative healing, spiritual development, animal welfare, and environmental concerns in the form of guest speakers who are experts in their fields. We hope we can help you find the answers you are looking for. We encourage you to embrace the show with an open mind and continue to ask questions that will lead you to better health and greater understanding in your own life. We will give you our contact information at the end of the show if you, if you would like to know more about tonight's show or any of our past shows. We hope that you enjoy the show. Thank you. <coughs> and tonight is our 70th show and the show's topic is stress and its effects on the body. Now I think that's something a lot of us can relate oh, to, right? Oh, very much. Absolutely. <coughs> and our guest is Dr. Roger Sylvester. He's a nutritional consultant and chiropractor. Dr. Sylvester did his undergraduate studies at Rhode Island College where he majored in biology. He then studied at the National College of Chiropractic in Chicago, Illinois. He holds a Bachelor of Science degree in human biology and a doctorate in chiropractic. He has practiced for 25 years using chiropractic, vitamin and mi mineral and herbal supplementation as well as dietary changes with his patients. He has taken hundreds of hours of postgraduate study in applied kinesiology and hundreds of hours in metabolic nutrition. He has been a guest on several radio talk shows and has lectured on nutrition and applied kinesiology from New Brunswick, Canada to Florida. He is currently using various metabolic therapies and helping patients sort out and find treatment for their conditions that have been difficult to solve through conventional medicine. Um, okay, well, we thank welcome you. you. Welcome to our show. It's good welcome. to be here. Thank uh, you very, um, <laughs> it's funny, we've never had a show on stress yet. No, I know, so we wanted this to is a very new topic much. For yes. us and I don't know why after 70 shows we may have touched upon it, but it's going to be really good to dig deep in. I hope so. hope we can answer some questions and kind of sort things out tonight. Great. Okay. Well, the first question that we always ask our guests is what made you choose this field? Uh, you know, um, that was very interesting. In high school, I decided I was going to be a chiropractor. Uh, at the um, really? interest of someone who took an interest in me, an older person, and then oh. said, hey, what are you going to do with your life? And I said, I don't know. And so anyway, I <coughs> pursued Rhode Island College and get prepared for chiropractic school because you had to have all your prerequisites and so mm -hmm. on. And still wasn't sure what it was about. I understood what they did yeah, it wasn't mechanically. wasn't as popular. No, no, no. Years that ago. was over 30 yeah. years ago. And right. uh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> in any event, uh, and when I got to chiropractic school uh, in my first semester, I saw Dr. George Goodhart, who is the founder of Chir applied kinesiology. Mm -hmm. And he started that back in the early 60s and watched him work. And I said, this is for me. So wow. um, I pursued kinesiology through, applied kinesiology through chiropractic school and in practice. Um, and at the same time, I also had health challenges that began early in life and suffered with uh, colitis, and a very severe colitis uh, problem. Um, and so I ended up having to be my own physician. They always say those that have mm -hmm. the you know, yeah. patient as a uh, their own self as, as a, a patient. Lawyer. Right, well, doesn't apply to doctors. Anyway, <laughs> any of it. I um, think it does. I think people come into an understanding mm -hmm. just trying to find answers for themselves. Well, uh, there you know, was, and there weren't a lot of answers for me. And you know, there was uh, X-rays that were done, and they actually were able to document the colitis in the colon. Um, and there was a lot of blood that I lost in the course of the process. It was very. Mm. Oh. So I gave my life's blood literally to know what mm. I know. And uh, it wasn't until I was uh, and pursued that from chiropractic school on. Um, <clears throat> and it wasn't until I was in my mid-30s that I actually found an answer for the colitis for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was uh, another like stepping stone and, and um, 
uh, point where I just I started to grow rapidly in this information mm -hmm. and so it was a profound thing and I the, you know some people always say always go to the doctor that used to have what you have oh, absolutely. if he still they has it you don't want to see that doctor, so you know? ah, yes. but in any mm -hmm. event uh, it was a uh, it was a poisoning thing that I was being poisoned by and mm -hmm. uh, figured it out and got it resolved and we can talk about it later I guess wow. as we go through that yeah, yeah. Um. <clears throat> it's a common thing actually <laughs> Uh, you want to tell our uh, audience what kinesiology is? I was going to ask that, yeah. Uh, well, kinesiology itself is the study of motion, mm -hmm. okay? Ology simply means the study of, and kinesiology, uh, kinetics is motion, so it's the study of motion. Uh, in the case of applied kinesiology, we take that information and we apply it to when we watch someone walk or how their gait might be. We can look at them and say, well, gee, the arm isn't swinging properly here, the gait isn't as long as it should be here. And then we can back into that and say, okay, what muscles might not be working properly? Mm -hmm. And then identify those things. And then from there, we can even springboard deeper into the body um, because each organ has its own uh, muscle association. And so sometimes certain problems physiological, mechanically, can actually reflect um, a organ problem or a visceral problem inside an internal problem. Mm -hmm. And so we can back into that somehow, sometimes, and actually identify, gee, this shoulder problem you have is really from your liver. It's not just some mechanical thing in your shoulder. Wow. Yeah, so there is. applied kinesiology is a good tool diagnostically. It's not an end-all, be-all. It's just a tool. Mm -hmm. right. You know, I can verify that because um, I once had an arthritis in in, a, in a, my this finger it was really swollen and it was really stuck up the bone and all that. So I had saw, went to an um, uh, acupuncturist, an old Chinese doctor in um, out in uh, Norwalk, and he was fantastic. And so he looked at it and he goes, "You think you have arthritis?" I said, "Yeah." He goes, "No, stress, stress in the shoulder." So he gave me the, the reiki in the shoulder. The finger straightened right out. Wow. <laughs> so. True, and it's being ident be able to identify those kinds of things and making the connection um, with problems and it, it, it nice problems long standing. Mm -hmm. Acupuncture, mm -hmm. I meant. I'm yeah, sorry. That's okay. Uh, I get it. Um, <laughs> Uh, if the problem's long standing, chances are there's some other problem underneath all that. Right. And so uh, it's being able to identify those things, whether it's the liver or the thymus or the gallbladder or the pancreas or lungs or right. thyroid or what have you. I know in, in Reiki we associate a lot of, you know, the blocks in the chakras to specific organs and specific emotions. Mm -hmm. It's like Absolutely. you can't Absolutely. disconnect the emotion with the organs. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Big, big, big part and of the picture. And it's so literal sometimes. Oh, absolutely. It's so common sense. Yes, and yes. You yes. wonder, you know, how we could. You're a pain in the neck, they yes. might say, and yeah. sure yeah. enough. <laughs> you have a pain That's in the right. neck. That's right. what they have. Yep. Yes, you're right. Wow. Okay, well, the topic of tonight's show, what is stress? We're well, asking you now. Okay. <laughs> stress, I'm going to read the definition. It's an actual medical de definition for stress, and I'm okay. going to read it from Dorland's Medical Dictionary. There's several medical dictionaries. This is a standard in the industry. And so we'll just read what they have to say, and we'll kind of sort it out after that. Okay. okay. So stress. Stress is the sum of all nonspecific biological phenomenon elicited by adverse external influences including damage and defense. It may be localized as in the local adaptation syndrome, called LAS, or systemic as in the general adaptation syndrome. Hmm. Doesn't mean a lot, no, but no. we'll sort it out. No, we have to break that down. Yes. Well, so it's an everyday word in most households. Well, if you look at the systemic part of it, it says the general adaptation syndrome, which if abbreviated means gas, the, you know, yeah. the alliteration <laughs> is gas, and so we literally run out of gas. And it's the systemic issue that I really want to focus on. And the primary organ to deal with stress are the adrenal glands. Okay. And the adrenal glands have gotten a lot of play lately and in, in certainly in the um, uh, bio, biomedical field in terms of the metabolic side of things. Um, and the adrenal glands get their name from um, they ride on top of the renal glands, which are the kidneys. Okay. And so hence the name adrenal. So they're added to the renal, adrenal. 
So oh. just a simple. I didn't know that. Uh, language. A little Latin thing. <laughs> yeah, well, the language uh, technique anyway. Um, but the adrenals are powerful organs. They elicit. They make hormones. Um, they make adrenaline. They make cortisol. They make DHEA. They actually make a hormone that uh, a couple of hormones that regulate the kidneys to help them uh, manage fluid flow and uh, fluid in the body. So mm. they could even impact possibly blood pressure given that uh, information. Uh -huh. So they're a powerful organ and we kind of wear them out. And they are the guys that deal with stress no matter what it is, whether it's emotional, whether it's chemical, or mechanical. And it's those three areas that we have to look at and I have to evaluate and um, identify, <clears throat> is this really, you walk in with a shoulder problem, as she said, her hand was arthritic, et cetera, mm -hmm. and you'll walk in with a shoulder problem and I have to decide, well, is this really just a shoulder that she injured years ago or is this some other thing that's cropped up? And usually the history will, will tell us that. And uh, history is 80% of the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And you walk in with the mm -hmm. history. And I just want to say for people listening that history is important and validate that if you think that this is the problem and the problem occurred for this reason, then more than likely it is. I don't know how many times people come to me with particular spouses will come together and I'll say in, on my history form, uh, the last question, I have a five page history form that you fill out before we see Yeah, you. I know one thing I credit nature passed for is the yep. amount of history that you Absolutely. are required to give and like some conventional doctors it's a five minute form well it's you know a symptom survey how, how, period yes. and, this, and we're and asking all kinds of environmental yeah. questions and where do you live how long you've lived in this house do you have pets do you this do you that right and so one of the last questions in fact the very last question in my history form says ever since blank I haven't felt well uh, I know what was the <laughs> event what was exactly the was there an event trigger? was there and it'd be interesting the answers that I get and oftentimes I'll go right to that first to see what's going on. Some might say, ever since I moved to this place, ever since I took this job, ever since I got married, ever since I had my last child. I mean, all mm -hmm. kinds of answers crop up, and so then that becomes the basis for me to look at, all right, what is it around that circumstance? So if they said, well, um, gee, ever since we remodeled our house. Mm. Okay, and so did they get into some new carpeting or new furniture and were they out gassing of fumes, et cetera, that could be a problem there. Be a um, or did we it change the Right. Or energy did we of the since we moved to this house, so is there mold in the basement? Disturb something, yeah. Okay, and so that becomes a problem. And so there's all these little tells that people have that they don't know they have, and so oftentimes a couple will come in and they'll say, Well, is there anything else you want to tell me? Even after they've answered all the questions and that last questions and they'll look at each other like should we tell them? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, all oh, ears. That's the yeah, one I want to right. hear. I think right. people okay. aren't used to that. Well, that's true. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, well, we've already told 10 doctors this or 8 doctors this, mm -hmm. but they all say it has nothing to do with anything. And then that's when I'm all ears. That's the one I want to hear. Mm -hmm. And so they'll say, that's just, you know, we did such and such. We went on this trip. And this is an actual case where yeah. they went on this trip. And ever since we stayed in this motel, we, he hasn't been able to breathe. And it turns out there was mold in the air conditioner okay. of that particular room, and it affected him worse than her. Mm -hmm. And so he struggled with this respiratory problem, et cetera. And so, okay, then we know what we're up against. So chances are uh -huh. there's a problem there. And so then they're all on, on to all kinds of, uh, you know, respiratory uh, aids, et cetera, and never really getting to the root cause. Mm -hmm. Right. And so. Because doctors treat symptoms. Well, they unfortunately, the goal, the their cause, goal yeah. is, and, and that, that uh, concept I just gave you about 80% of the histories, you know, uh, I'm sorry, 80% of the diagnosis are from the history is in a standard medical uh, um, history book. It's mm -hmm. in their diagnosis books. That's from their, that's their information. It's not something I made up. And so ideally, they're supposed to listen to you, do their tests, and then confirm or rule out things based on the testing. Unfortunately today, the testing becomes the primary focus, and I don't want to hear what you have to say, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And the um, cause isn't important. Just to absolutely, the and symptom. you're walking around yeah. with the history. It's yeah. happened to you. And so if it happened to you and you think it's so, more than likely it is so. Right. And so that's why I, I, I like to listen to people and I want to get their information um, because they're the one that have the story. They have the answers for me. Now, sometimes I have to kind of prod them and ask them about, uh, for example, a woman brought her 10-year-old son to me who had, quote, ADD, and he was restless and couldn't sit still, et cetera. 
And when I examined him through my kinesiology, et cetera, I figured out that he might have some cadmium poisoning here. And so... What would that be, you want to tell Type of metal, right? Uh, cadmium's a metal. Okay. That's right, thank you. Um, and so in talking to her, I, we talked about what did he, did he do any hobbies, did he do this or that. And uh, cadmium is found in um, particularly tires and it's, uh, get, it ends up in the atmosphere a lot, but he's not around a tire factory. They don't have a tire store that they sell tires or things tire like that. Swing or something. Okay, yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, and so uh, I asked her about her pregnancy because he had been had problems since he was born. He struggled, he was always restless, couldn't sleep well. Mm -hmm. And so he'd been in problems since he was born, or he's had problems since he was born. And uh, so I asked her, I said, well, what was your pregnancy like? She said, oh, it was fine, it was good, it was a normal pregnancy. And I said, well, did you have any hobbies during your pregnancy? No, well, I did take ceramics. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, and uh, how did that go? That was fine, except, well, there was this one day. I was about eight months pregnant, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, they, we were at our last session, and they were firing the things in the kiln, and boy, it was a lot of fumes that night, et cetera, in class, and so on, and boy, on the, in fact, I had to leave early because he was moving around a lot, and on the way home, I thought I was going to have to go to the hospital. He was just, wow. this is a true story. He was kicking and I thought I was so uncomfortable, wow. etc. And I finally, it seemed to calm down. I finally got home and I told my husband and he wanted to take me to the hospital, but it was getting better and better. But uh, ever since then, ever it's since, restless, yeah. wow. then, and so then he struggled once he was born and here we are. Yeah, so I, then I had um, a situation where I had a miscarriage in my, the very end of my first trimester and I had literally just um i had broken a thermometer like a mercury thermometer on me oh my goodness oh. And, and the doctors sort of just dismissed it like oh. like it was nothing i'm like could this have been a contribution absolutely and they absolutely. were like no that's absolutely. minor absolutely absolutely oh. today if you break a thermometer in a school they're going to clear the school mm. okay yeah, i so broke it on top of me right so Oh, wow. Excuse me. Yeah. Mercury is a big, big issue. I was shaking it or something, and like hit the mirror. Right. Spilled right. all over me. Yeah. Um, and that's that. In fact, was the problem I had for with the colitis. And since you brought it up, I'll, wow. I'll broach that subject now. And it was the mercury in my fillings, in oh, my teeth, wow. that was the problem for me. And there are people out there that tolerate those fillings mm. reasonably well, but a good portion of the population doesn't, and the symptoms are subtle. Mm -hmm. And so that's just another area I look at when people come and we look at their mouth and. The dentist should be telling us the things that are going on there, but they're not. And, and with vaccinations, too, that have oh the mercury goodness. in them. Yeah, Yeah, mm. and that becomes a whole other topic. Yes. <laughs> but yes, they are an issue. So Do you think that ADD for children has been, is like misdiagnosed a lot? Well, let me I put mean, it this way. There's a, there, there's a category of manifestations, and so what they want to do is medicate the child to calm them down rather than try to identify right. really where the problem came from. Yeah. Right, yeah. okay. Uh, we had one just recently. I had two recently. Um, one was a young boy, 10 years old, who, uh, and in his case, the, uh, he was fine up until a certain age, about 7 or 8. Now he's 10. And he struggled for the last two or three years in school and behavior problems and so on and so on. And so when we first started working with the young boy, it, it looked like there was a fungal problem, et cetera, which there was, but it wasn't the primary issue. And so because, and the reason it wasn't primary was because the results weren't what I'm used to getting. When I hit the nail on the head, the responses are remarkable. And he was doing better, but it was, and she saw him doing better, and so I wasn't satisfied with the results that we were getting. And so I, I asked her some other questions, and then she ended up calling me between visits that we, uh, between the time she saw me. And so she said something else, and I said, bring that up when you see me next time. And it turned out that there was an emotional issue that occurred with a neighborhood boy several years ago. And it resulted in all kinds of uh, legal battles and so on and mm -hmm. therapy etc cetera, etc cetera. and so when we address that issue and and I have a laser technique that we use to help the brain kind of ramp things down and put things in historical perspective etc and that's a whole other oh that's story. another show yeah. it is oh yes so, I, I see a couple shows coming up here yeah uh, go in ahead. any event we did that we did that technique and um, he calmed right down and the next day she's calling me telling me that are you going to know home from the teacher 
He's, he's just wanting to pay attention, and, and within two weeks, he was helping other students. I mean, it was remarkable, the response that we got. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. until, I paid, until I paid attention to the emotional, emotional. issue, right. and that one came to mind by reason of, and I'll tell you this other one, a little quick one, um, a young boy about eight years old, um, and I, we live up north, and so I see people up north, and I see people in Connecticut, and I run back and forth. Um, but this young boy was out with his grandmother on a four-wheeler, and I, they were riding together. And, and they cool were in grandma. a ravine, and the machine fell over, and she got pinned. Mm -hmm. And so he had to run and get help, et cetera. And she was laid up for quite a while, et cetera. And it was in the summer. Now, I'm seeing him uh, October, November. This happened like in June or July. And, and the reason I was seeing him was for a parasite problem that he had intestinally. Now they identified it clearly with, at the medical right. uh, therapy, and they identified he's got this parasite, etc., and it's bothering him, and his bowels were off, etc. And so I have some you know, uh, herbs and stuff that deal with that. And she tried the conventional method; it seemed to help, but it didn't hold it together. So we put him on the herbs, and they started to help, etc. But again, I wasn't satisfied with the result, and I kept asking her questions about uh, things that had gone. And I known I had known something about this young boy. His father had been killed in a logging accident. Oh God two years before. Oh God. Uh, so I knew and so she was now remarried and so I knew there was a you know this emotional potential that was an emotional event. So she asked him is that you know daddy dying and so on does that bother you? He said no and he said she said well what else? And he said well uh, grandma this summer and then she told me the story about how the grandmother had gotten hurt in the four-wheeler and she said well do you think about that? He says every day. Uh, and she oh, never knew that. So again we used our laser technique desensitized him to the issue and uh, his response was remarkable, and I've seen him. That was uh, oh quite a while ago, and I only saw him two or three times after that. Wow! And I don't. She doesn't call for nutrients anymore because he doesn't need them. The the parasite got resolved, so his immune system was able to now kick in and do what needed to be done. So that stressor, the emotional one in his case, and the other boy's case with the cadmium was the stressor preventing him from moving forward. Right. The other little boy was an emotional altercation with the neighborhood child. So, so there these stresses these come in so many different ways. Exactly. I was going to ask you that question. Can a body, something, something that happened that's stressful, I remember something in my own life mm -hmm. that changed my body, mm -hmm. and it can, and you just answer the question, it can. Oh, it will, and, yeah. it, and, and uh, as long as we're on that emotional subject, I'm just going to kind of kick the door wide open here okay. because this, uh, it, it was, this is a, a new area for me. I've always known it was there, but it's, I've, we've explored it in some other ways in the last several years. Um, and so you just pointed out and with regard to an emotional event, um, it, emotional events that occurred to us uh, in childhood. And so those traumas could be rejection, uh, molestation, um, verbal physical abuse, incest, all those kinds of things that happen before the age of 11 or 12 actually get locked in the thalamus and the subconscious and then they begin to create behaviors later on in life. And, yeah, so and your body's trying to constantly adapt around well, this you big end up you end up triggering yeah. and behaving in a certain mm -hmm. way. And I'll give you an example. You know people, and you've seen this happen, where someone is an adult and they're thirties or forty years old or more, and somehow all of a sudden they lose it, and they just start almost acting like a five-year-old, throwing a temper tantrum, and just and all I said was this: I don't know what happened. He lost it, or she yeah, lost it, etc. And actually, what happened button. was whatever you pushed a button that brought them right back to that time in early childhood that hasn't been resolved yet. And yes. the brain wants to resolve it, but it buries it many times so that because we're, our nervous system isn't mature enough to process things through. So it says, well, let me put it over here and I'll, we'll get to it later once the nervous system has grown and be can able to handle these things. Unfortunately, other baggage falls on top of that yeah. and it doesn't actually get processed yeah, out. Yeah. The beauty is it can ha it can be processed out and at any age. And then you're trying, you go to therapy and all these other things and mm -hmm. you're dealing with those layers of baggage but never that initial, you the know. The underlying the thing. And, yeah. and, there was, and part of my issue was from something an uncle had done to me when I was a child yeah. that uncle should not to do. Mm. Right. Okay, and so uh, that was always in my memory, but I never thought of it as a real issue. Now some people actually bury or those things. something that would cause a physical problem. Exactly. Right. Okay, and so uh, it's unraveling, and this whole thing is coming bigger and uh, bigger and bigger for me in the, over these last five or six years. It's just, and and I'm responding, and I'm doing better, and I'm feeling stronger, and, and so on. And issues that and behaviors that you engage in, you don't know where they come from. 
And so that's whether you're a drug addict or an alcoholic or a mm -hmm. you know, gambler or whatever you're into, whatever your problem is, uh, it could be gossiping, it could be anything. Hoarding. Okay. Hoarding things, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, pack rat type things, mm -hmm. and and so what ends up happening is we have these behaviors because we're trying to compensate from something in childhood. Yeah. In childhood, and so mm -hmm. the other part of that package is that the on button is still on with regard to the adrenals. And the, the body's always trying to, like, say, look at this problem, because your body's well, like the you, we, perfect we, we barometer. Try, we, well, uh, we sometimes want to do it, and sometimes we want to ignore it, because the emotion around that is so painful mm -hmm. and traumatic mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we don't want to face it. And so what we end up doing, is <laughs> we, we do that, or we end up having these behaviors <laughs> such as uh, being a neat nick. Um, oh, compulsive like behavior, and, yeah. okay, or where, uh, in my case, I was a, uh, a task-oriented person. If I didn't get enough things done in a day, I'd have to make my list. And if I didn't get all these things done in a day, at the end of the day, I was frustrated. And my wife would say, what is wrong? You got this done and that done. I mean, well, well, well what happened? Yeah, but I didn't get all these done. And so you get frustrated, and then you have to do more tasks. And so you end up becoming task oriented And because why? That's your self-worth. Because when you were... And also, if you're busy, you don't have to stop and exactly. process Face the Exactly. You don't yeah. have to stop and actually yeah. look at the stuff. Yeah. And that's what we do. We, we try to compensate and bury it. And so we become task-oriented because when we're insulted as a child, our self-worth and validation drops. These mm -hmm. are all things from psychologists, etc., that have put all this stuff together. And so they, our validation drops, and so we don't think... Uh, uh, well of ourselves and so we have a poor self-image and so in order to get a good self-image we become task oriented or clean freaks or whatever or it is. Or the opposite, you, hoarding yeah, anything. Hoarding or, or, anything. or you go the other way and you just don't want to do anything. Right. So things pile up and you just, you know, you eating. appear to be lazy or to be eating. It Provide could be any behavior you, that we're yeah. driven to that we don't seem to have control over. 90% of the time it's based in some trauma early on. Absolutely. Wow. That's interesting. Uh, go ahead. I was just going to kind of move in a different direction in terms of stress. Do you think that word is like being overused, or do you feel like, you know, our worlds really have become chaotic and. We um, need I to don't find think ways it's overused. I don't think it's. Uh, the understanding is adequate. Okay. Is where I would put it. Uh, oftentimes, you go to the doctor and he says, well, you're under too much stress. Right. And I think so it's thrown around so much. It's like, what, well, what is it? And right. And so, and so the presumption is that, well, just reduce the stress. Okay, help me out. Yeah. How do okay. I do that? Here's a pill. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. That's what they do. Exactly. Cover, and I, let, we'll just cover it. Exactly. Pull the covers up over the head. Exactly. And that's and it. And that's not the remedy. No. The remedy yeah. is let's look at the underlying Balance, issue. And yeah. so sometimes my laser helps. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes we have to do deeper things. Uh, I was working with a woman. She came for gallbladder problems about uh, six or eight weeks ago, 50 years old, single woman, and she uh, knew she had the gallbladder problems. She wanted to address it with herbs and such and so on. I said, okay, and for whatever reason, on that particular day with that woman, I just intuitively thought, you know, maybe we get to look a little over here. And so kinesiologically, it's ways to kind of unravel certain things, ask certain questions and so on. So anyway, I, I came to the point where I said, you know, I think this is an emotional basis here. And she looked at me and went, Really? And what she admitted was that she'd been hiding it, and she, didn't, she knew she had things to deal uh -huh. with, and she didn't want to deal with them. And so I was the first one to confront her and bring it to her attention and say, you need to look at this and start to deal with it. So she said, okay. So we gave her some ideas, and she worked on some things. So she came back two weeks later, and we started talking more about what the assault was, et cetera, and it turned out to be a verbal thing in childhood. So I said, well, let's work on that with our laser and have you think about it and so on. Well, as we're doing that process, um, she said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm done with that. And she says, but I want to say something. And I said, okay, what do you want to say? She says, well, what I want to say is uh, I'm beautiful um, just the way I am. Aww. And I said, say it again. She said it again. Yeah, she said too. it four or five times, and she started to cry. Aww. I left the room, and I said, here, just relax, let it go, do what you have to do. I'll be back in a couple minutes. And that became the linchpin for turning around for her. And now she, she comes in with a smile, and then we talk, work on some other issues, and then Start she leaves with a smile. Herself, yeah. And now she's able to move forward. And so now we're going to resolve the gallbladder problem. We're going to resolve some of these other things because we've gotten to some of the major issues. Now, and so Thanksgiving's coming up, and so now there's this little you know, concern about, well, I'm going to be with the family That's that curious, created that yeah. problem. I said, that's OK, don't worry about it. And so we talked about the concepts of compassion and so on. And she's, 
in fact, she called me Sunday for another issue, and we got back into it again, and I gave her some ideas for this week coming and for Thanksgiving, et cetera. And we'll see how it plays out. And, but the door's been open, and the journey has begun. And the neat mm -hmm. part is the brain wants to make new is always making new brain cells, yeah. even till the day we die. Mm. And so when we have these traumas that hit us in childhood, we end up with these roadblocks. And so the brain can literally make a pathway around that ro roadblock. As soon as we start the process of when she said, uh, I'm beautiful just the way I am, she She's started making, making a new, a new pathway. Now yeah. it's gonna take a couple of years to complete that pathway, but she started the new pathway. And the brain cells are doing it. That's why I said, like speak. you know, the, you can have your you know re cell regenerate based on uh, the memories that are there, or you can condition them into new memories, you mm -hmm. know, into new. Exactly. And exactly. but that's a very conscious thing you have to you do. You start it, but then the thalamus, which is where our subconscious is, and it's it a takes very over real, like riding a bike. It's it hard does first, its own thing. It, it does its own thing, and it starts to do it while we're on. You know, while we're sleeping, while we're traveling, while we're doing other things, it's working. And sometimes it actually says, you know what, I want to rest. Don't do anything today. Take a break. Just let me do my thing. Sleep. Take a nap. And ah. so those regenerative times are very important. If you yeah. think that's important, take it. Unfortunately, our schedules don't always allow. Yeah, we I push ourselves through that. Some people have, you know, um, issues with, like, feeling that if they take leisure time, it's laziness and yeah. there's that Because they're task-oriented. Really yeah. like, yes. They're task-oriented. Yes. Feel guilty. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, l let me back into a, another thing with regard to those people that are out exercising all the time. Oh, yes. That's and that's not nothing me. wrong with exercise. We need it. We need to get our heart rates up. We need to get the circulation going. We need to get our lymph moving, etc. However, there are some people that they, they go to the gym when they're exhausted. And they say, oh, I feel better after I go. And the reason they feel better is because the adrenal glands are our stress organs. They just step up to the plate when, no matter what the stress is, whether it's cold, whether it's cold, as you were talking about earlier, or it's uh, heat, or it's food, or it's chemicals, or it's emotion, or whatever. They're there for us, and they step up to the plate. So when we're tired, they're tired. And so what we do is we go out and physically do something that causes them to have to work harder. And so then the adrenaline pours out, and then we feel better. So we live on adrenaline. Unfortunately, we're going to the savings account, and we're taking out of the savings account all the time and never putting back. Yeah. And so eventually, we're asking them to wear out sooner. Wow. So Is there natural things you can take to nourish the, the uh Absolutely. Absolutely. There's okay. a whole raft of herbs and nutrients right. and vitamins, et cetera. Yeah, that, I heard uh, pantothenic acid was pantothenic good. Pantothenic acid is a powerful one, powerful one for people to use. Yeah. Absolutely. And then there are substances like caffeine that drains your adrenals Absolutely. as it's, well. Absolutely. It's uh, like leaving this lights, lights on and, and dome light on in your Excite, car overnight. Exciting them. Sure. Yeah. And you're stimulating them. But then there's this fall afterwards. Herbs like ashwagandha and astragalus are very powerful herbs. Um, and so, you know, we, we try to figure out, and kinesiologically, we're able to figure out which one do you need today, rather than just me giving you a whole list of herbs and vitamins, et cetera, and right. saying, okay, let me take the kitchen sink, and maybe one of them help me. Right. Uh, we yeah. can identify more likely what's going to work. And even then, it's, it's a struggle. So, you know, I may have eight or ten things on a particular area, a particular tissue I want to address, and I'm going to go target those that are going to do the biggest change today. And we literally make changes in people's lives before they leave the office many times. So, but we find, have to find that right substance, whether it's a vitamin or a mineral or an herb mm -hmm. or whatever it is, or a combination that day. Mm -hmm. And everybody's so unique. That's Absolutely. And so you walk in and people call me on the phone and they start telling me their story. And so I, I have an idea and 50% of the time, what I thought from what they said is not it. I listen to the body. And it was hard to learn to listen to the body. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. But I've learned to listen to the body. It's like, ego, step aside. <laughs> exactly. So um, yeah. unfortunately, when the doctor says, most doctors say, well, we'll try this, people don't hear the word try. They hear, this is going to work, is what they uh. hear. OK? When the doctor's literally saying, let's try this, because we'll try it and see if right. it works. And well, it didn't work. Oh, OK, well, let's try this. And so I could be doing that because I could say, well, okay, she brought up pentothenic acid. Pentothenic acid is good. It's vitamin B5. It's good for adrenal support. It's one of the things the adrenals need to do, make cortisol and DHEA and do with all these other things. Well, if I just give you that and you don't, your B vitamin 5 levels are fine, it's not going to do anything mm -hmm. for you. Uh, the herbs of astragalus and ashwagandha particularly are what are called adaptogens. Mm -hmm. Ginseng is also one. Um, uh, the uh, 
Chinese gens ginseng. Panax. And yep, Panax, Panax uh, quinquefolia. I'm just being a little silly here. But mm -hmm. anyway, the, uh, the, uh, those herbs are adaptogens, and the adaptogens are really nice because if the adrenals need upregulation, they'll do that. If they need to be toned down, they'll do that. And that's the beauty of adaptogens, if you need them. You might like with the immune system too. I know that you know, like some people have um, autoimmune problems or whatever. Mm -hmm. and you don't want to like overstimulate. You don't want to understimulate. This is why you shouldn't self-medicate. You need to go to someone like yourself, modulate to get the right. Right. It's it's yeah. difficult to understand some people of those things. Do that, Let's you know. just talk a little bit about uh, what the adrenals do and what do they, the effect that they have on the body. Uh, when you're stressed for whatever reason, the first thing that happens is cortisol levels go up. Mm -hmm. and which is a hormone and DHEA levels go down so let's talk about those two hormones for a second cortisol is a hormone that is the guy makes that's going to help you makes you fat well it could <laughs> do that for a variety of reasons <laughs> well we'll see why in a second um, but it's the guy that's elaborated to help you actually cope with the things that's going on yep. okay on the short term and so but one of the ways it does that is it, it, it takes energy from other places so one of the places it takes energy from is the digestive tract and the immune system, it shuts them down. So ideally, you want, mm -hmm. in the ideal situation, your stress would be something acute, short term, hours or days, right. and then it ends, and then you spend a days or weeks recovering from that event, and you just rest, and your adrenals restore, and they come back to normal, and the cortisol levels go back down, everybody go, is happy. Unfortunately, in our society, our stressors are chronic, and so we don't get spikes of cortisol, we get low levels of cortisol. So we turn off our digestive tract by 30 or 40 percent. We turn down our immune system by 30 or 40 percent. Mm, so wow. we're walking around chronically with these things depressed, hamstrung yeah. and not able to function. They're depressed in, in their ability to function. The same thing happens also with those emotional things we talked about in childhood. They lay there. And their adrenals are still kind of like right. the, the, the throttles that half throttle all the time. Yeah, and your normal baseline is like much lower than it should be, and you've grown used to that. Right, and you think, oh, this is normal, when in fact it's not. Right. And so then you add on top of that American stress, yeah. you know, our livelihood, Road our rage our li and yeah, all that stuff, okay? Constant so, phone calls. So then where do you, you know, you're going to the bank all the time, and you're pulling out, and you're pulling out, and you never have restoring. And so you take medication excuse me, that sort of takes control of the nervous system and the adrenals and some hormone levels maybe, but then the liver has to process that out. And so then levels have to get higher and higher and then your body starts to resist that stuff. And so the answer is, well, take double the dose or triple the dose. And so that's not truly the answer. So if we can identify where the stressors are, okay, um, then we can start to unravel things. And some are really pretty straightforward. Uh, one woman came in and her mother had passed away and so she needed to deal with the house that was left. And so she spent uh, eight months going every day after work cleaning the house out and getting it ready to sell. Mm -hmm. And so she spent eight or 10 months doing that. By the time I saw her, it was she was coming to the end of that process. But she worked an eight hour day and then we go by the, her mother's house, which is on the way home from work. And she'd put three hours in every day, five days a week. By the time I saw her, uh, she was wasted and she was on her way to the uh, uh, medication and the doctor had start, wow. started, was going to recommend it and she said, well, can I try something else first? She said, fine. So she got a her heard of me and so we, she came and we put her on some stuff and immediately we were able to start to restore things. And she had a little bit more to do and you know, we resolved the issue and so that was a short term thing. It was eight months, but it wasn't like mm -hmm. 50 years worth of it. Right. And so we were able to restore her and we put it back. I see her now every six months just to kind of keep my eye on what's going on. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll put her out for a year the next time if things were okay. And, but that was sort of a short term stress. Mm -hmm. And she's back to normal. She's smiling now and she's able to, life is wonderful again. But she was sort of in this, got to get this done, got to get this done for the estate, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that was, a, con a controlled one, it had a limit. Some of these others don't have limits. And I think sometimes if you can see, you know, there's an end to this tunnel, sure. you, you find those reserves to get through it, but if it's just an ongoing chronic situation. And then when you get through the tunnel, then yeah. you start to recover. Yeah, if you're smart enough to take the rest that you need. Well, then we end people. up in relationships because of the childhood issues that we got into. So we make certain choices <laughs> yeah. that are not wise for us in terms of relationships. And so then oh, yeah. that becomes a stress and you end up living under those influences or situations. And so you have to make 
choices there and some people don't and you know it just snowballs mm -hmm. and so it's uh, the stress I don't think is overused I just don't think it's well understood the presumption is in society that the stress is only emotional when, when you hear the word stress the doctor says we are under too much stress what do you think emotional yeah you yeah. think emotional Okay, on top of that, we have to look at the chemical exposures, and then we have environmental to also, stressors, and, you know, the environment, yeah. all the environmental stuff, oh and then God, also the mechanical stuff that goes up. And so, yes, the, and here's the deal: know. some people, uh, we all have this stress barrel, if you will. Okay, for some of us, it's a 55-gallon drum; some of it's a five-gallon barrel bucket. Okay, so it fills up faster for others some than others, okay? And so the body doesn't distinguish between emotional stress, okay, we'll put that in the emotional barrel, we're gonna put uh, chemical stress in this barrel, and we'll put the mechanical stress in this barrel. They're all mixed together, that's mm -hmm. cumulative. And so all those start to wear on us. And so then, you know, you get financial woes that people have, and they call me with those. And so, you know, I'm the doctor, I'm their counselor, I'm their preacher sometimes, I'm their <laughs> financial advisor sometimes, you know, in minor ways. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we, we do what we have to do. You know, um, I don't want to change the stress subject, but there was an interesting case you were telling me about that I really think people should know about. It had to do with the man <coughs> who had the problem with the teeth. And mm -hmm. I, I would love you to tell that story to the audience because I don't think people are totally not aware of this. Okay. And all this man almost lost his life because of it, right? Absolutely. Okay. Um, uh, this was a man that came to me. Uh, I, I saw his wife for a time, and so I'm going to look back and forth here if it's all right. But yes. I saw his wife for a time, and it was because of the results that we got with her that he was willing to come see me because his experience with doctors had been less than pleasant. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, after taking care of her and getting her back on her feet, etc., he said, do you think you could help me? So anyway, he came, and this is a man who's uh, 39 years old, has had several heart attacks already. Oh my God! Wow. And uh, at 39, and so uh, when he came, we did some things. We put him on some herbs, etc. But it was clear to me that early on that there were some problems possibly in his mouth. And usually, when you come to me, first or second visit, I'm going to be looking in your mouth. So don't be offended, but that's, mm -hmm. that's part of the deal for sure. me to identify what's going on. In any event, we sent him out for an X-ray of his mouth and what we would like to have are the panoramic x-rays so it's a full mouth x-ray so I get to see not only the teeth but the bone and what's going on between the two and when I looked at it I knew that there were some things going on and there was some decay in the bone there was decay in the teeth um, and the teeth were actually disintegrating literally into the bone and so we went ahead and again this is not off the subject at all because this was the stress oh, for him oh, okay. that was the stress and until you deal with that stress, you're not going to fix them. Okay. Um, and we had them rinsing with herbs, etc., that were antibacterial because of the, and basically had infection and bacterial infection mm -hmm. in the mouth. And so we had to send him out, um, and he had to have surgery done, oral surgery, and he had to take that. In his case, he had to have a full mouth extraction and have the oh teeth my taken God, out. At 39. At 39 mm -hmm. years old. However, the, the, Why the, the is it going the, on? Yeah, I mean, well, what's happening to his well, bones? Well, he suffered some injuries over teeth? the years to his mouth and oh, face, okay. all right? And so that became the basis for the teeth loosening up and decay getting in there, oh, et cetera. Okay. And so uh, he's responding extremely well. His wife is extremely happy with his results and he's, he's getting his energy back and he's been fighting this for years, 10 years or so or more. And he's Didn't it affect his liver too? And so oh yeah, it's just a burden on the, on the liver. Uh, you know, oh. in, in many ways, the whole system was was shutting down. In, in his case, the bacteria was going to the to the, the heart. Oh, and it's wow. it's well known among dental <coughs> in the dental industry that um, bacteria from the mouth can go to the oh, heart. Yeah. And it's it, you have. And they say if you have any um, heart conditions or exactly. um, immune problems like. The whole, Don't like just getting your teeth clean. Absolutely, can be. right. So Why? Because it's stirring everything you're up. Stirring it up. These heart attacks were probably caused by this. Problem? Oh yeah, it was bacterially based in his case. And the dentist couldn't find that. Um, or the heart. The cardiologist never made that. Well, they're, they're, they're not going to look. The cardiology the mouth, people. The, 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 the hospitals are full of people that need to have their mouth worked on, that no one's looking in their mouth. Yeah. Because the presumption is that they went to the dentist, they went to the oral surgeon, and they take care of that. Right. And and there's this there's this disconnect, disconnect actually yeah. between the two professions, unfortunately. And the dentists don't see. I mean, uh, that well, surprised they, me. Well, they they see, but 
they don't see. And there's, uh, I'm going to move into an area that yeah, is politically on the limb not, a little bit. Yeah, well, right. it's we, politically we like to keep it a little. You know, yeah, un, we are a limb a unfavorable. Bit. Okay, but, <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, the dental industry is is uh, is being regulated and being told that they're not physicians. Now, dentists, and I just heard that on the way down here tonight, where, you know, come see Dr. So-and-so, he'll make you smile, look beautiful, et cetera, and they're great. They're excellent technicians, and they can put your face, mouth back together and look like a million bucks. But what did they do in the process in terms of actually dealing with the biology of what's going on in the mouth, okay? Mm -hmm. And so they become technicians, unfortunately, instead of physicians. And in fact, right. if they start to act like physicians, uh, yes, the, dental the, boards, rest, right? the dental boards will take their license. Oh, my goodness. And there, and there are cases that I do, there's a doctor here in Connecticut that I know who uh, went through a lot of that kind of stuff. And he was trying to act like a physician instead of a technician. And so, and you can't blame the dentist because, you know, he just spent all this time going to school, all this money, set up an office and all the involved and so on uh, to get started. And now he's starting to do this. And someone says, uh, you better not go over there and do this kind of stuff and just focus on this issue over here. And, oh, okay. And it's a, it's a big uh, controversy in the dental industry. And there are hmm. dentists right. who are wow. tuned in, and there are dentists that don't want to know, and there are dentists that are on the fence. I and heard that one of the highest suicide rates is among dentists. Absolutely, that's true. That's true. And the reason for that is, is that you have stress. <laughs> well, not only the stress, but there's a, there's a chemical stress that they go through, and that's from the mercury. Oh wow! I never, yeah, I didn't oh, make that yeah. connection. And the I just thought films, it was like they were really upset about making people no, <laughs> so nervous well, and unhappy. There, there's and the, the emotion, the pain, etc. But there's oh, also yeah. the uh, the mercury is uh, uh, f those fillings, those amalgam fillings are 50 percent mercury. And so uh, now today, wow. if you if you, someone breaks a thermometer in the school, they're going to yeah, clear the whole school. And, and nobody even gave me right. And they're going to thought about that. They're going to clear the whole school. Um, but there's more f mercury in your mouth than it's going to be in those fillings. In some people's cases, now some people yeah. have small or two small ones, not a big deal. Um, in Canada, they regulate how many fillings a child or an adult can have. In Europe, in Germany, they don't allow amalgam fillings anymore. I so those are the black ones. The, dark, the silver fillings are 50 percent, 49 percent mercury. Oh boy, am I in trouble? <laughs> yeah. that, and well, that becomes too. a burden on your me system. Too. You see, and so that's a stress on your system. So now that's a chronic load. So that basically, uh, I liken it to this. If you were a uh, half-ton pickup truck, and I think in terms of guy things, the, the capacity of the half-ton pickup truck is 1,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. So depending on how many of those you would have in your head, you could have 200 pounds in that truck consistently, 500, 800 pounds, and then say, well, I got a half-ton truck. I need to carry this load of 1,000 pounds. Let me throw that on top of that. Well, next thing you know, you're breaking your axle, you're breaking your springs, you're breaking and your shocks, you know, all mm -hmm. kinds of things because you already have that load in your system. And you're already, the, so the truck's running around with almost a capacity, and now you want it to do something else, like go out and work out, you see. And, but, yeah, and yeah. so now what we have to do is, and there are people that uh, either for a variety of reasons, financial or otherwise, or health reasons sometimes, so you can't deal with that load in terms of getting it out. And it's sometimes it's better just to leave it alone sometimes. And so what I have to do then is say, okay, let's look at How other things that are stressful. Your body well, too, let's like look at that. other things that are stressful. Are there certain dietary choices that you're mm -hmm. making that you need to avoid? Are there certain activities you need to avoid? Are there emotional issues that we can work with? And sometimes that's enough to lower the load and they can cope with what they have. Other times, as in this man's case that we were talking about a minute ago, um, it wasn't only the fillings that were in there, it was the infection in the teeth. Mm -hmm. And I must tell you, every dentist is, that's been out there four or five years or, or, or more or, uh, has seen people like this man I just talked about um, that they, they have a bad, and in his case it was multiple teeth, but most dentists have seen at least one person or more in their career where they have a person that has a really bad tooth infected, they extract that tooth, and man, the guy's health just improves instantly in weeks and the guys come back singing his praises. Unfortunately, they don't make the connection at lower levels. Um, I had another young man who was 22 years old, already had a cardiologist. Mm. And I, so knowing what I know, I said to him, well, have you had any dental work done? He says, no, any fillings? No, no, no. He said, well, I did have my wisdom teeth taken out about four years ago. So then I looked at him more carefully, and I could see that one side of his face was a little bulging more than the other. Now, we're asymmetrical, but this was more than just asymmetry. So I put a glove on, I went in his mouth, and I was able to touch the various spots. And sure enough, one of those Absolutely. pockets where the tooth, wisdom teeth had come out, three were fine, one was tender and sore. And it was right where that mm. little swelling was. 
So I said, you need to go back and have somebody look at this and pay attention to that and get that taken care of. And if he were to do that, and I don't know that he did, but if he were to do that, then he would resolve the heart issue. And so it's these little things right, that happen right. to us that are slow growing. Uh, a root canal is a very good source for bacteria to grow in the body. And so you might get a root canal at age 25, but by 40 or 50, you might have the arthritis, or you could have some other condition that's not related to the obvious things like bacteria and heart disease. You could have an autoimmune disease that's mm -hmm. creeping up, mm -hmm. Renault syndrome something that and I I've had people testify and tell me those stories from root canals and so they're so far removed and it takes time for those things to start to back up in our system that we ask those questions see and that's the thing too how many people can afford to get all the fillings taken out and mm. oh it's a, it's a pricey adventure exactly but not everyone gets affected by it though too right right many people there are many people that tolerate it and that's why it's so difficult for the dentist to, to really make the connection mm -hmm. um, because it's not so overt the guy didn't die after he put a filling in. Right. He got two years from now or ten years from now, uh, he's, he's just a little more tired or he just yeah. doesn't have the zip he used to have and so on. And I, let me just tell the audience this. If, you have, fillings, if yeah. you have fillings currently and your dentist wants to replace them with a whole new batch of silver ones, do not. Leave what you have there. You don't need the second load. Because mm. that second load, those things are constantly outgassing. And I have uh, video footage, maybe we can do it another time, mm -hmm. um, that shows, uh, and this is done, studies done at the universities, um, where they actually show the vapor coming off the tooth. Mm. Wow. And they actually show you what that vapor does in the body to nerve cells. And so that's more profound with a newer. Yeah, you get a new, if you get a fresh one, then that's, there's a lot, of, a lot more outgassing that goes on. Right. Um, they're saying at, uh, what was it, uh, at, uh, 110 degrees, a cup of coffee, is enough to cause one of those fillings to start to outgas. Mm. So you have mm -hmm. coffee, a couple of coffees, a couple of coffees a day, or something hot to drink, a hot tea. You're causing those things. You brush your teeth, they start to uh, uh, um, emit vapor for about 90 minutes after each episode. So what, oh you, there's other fillings, there's different kinds. The composite there. fillings are the white ones. The white ones. Um, but you can put those in molars? Well, some dentists argue that you can't, but I've seen dentists do it and they hold up. And so sometimes it has to do with per potentially the technique of the dentist and, and his skill at doing it, uh, or the choices he may make. Um, but this dentist I was telling you about in Connecticut who uh, had his license um, challenged, uh, for these types of reasons, uh, has been using the composite material for over 25 years. Wow. And they hold up just as well? And his held up. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so it's Some a little more labor intensive, yeah, et cetera. It's not, and so, it's not really a good thing to just rush out and start getting these all pulled out. No, no, you should really be evaluated yeah. and decide whether yeah. it's something yeah. that's a good idea for you because yeah. you may not See need if to. You can, right, like you, you said, not take not all to. the other stresses yeah. out and. Uh, right, well, you may not need to, to, or it. you may end up causing, uh, adding fuel to the fire yeah. because you could stir up something that yeah. could be a real big problem. That's what I've heard. You could stir up stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's not out. something that's, uh, you know, you want to do wow. just willy-nilly, yeah. um, although, although people have. That's, yeah. what we, that's what we try to tell these people, not to self-diagnose. Get right. the help that you need before you do right. these things. And, that's and what you can have fillings about. and people come and they want them taken out. And I say, well, that's not really the issue today. We right. really need to, it may show up in a few weeks or months from now, but that's not the primary issue. Let's deal with what's in front of us first, right. which may just be that they need some adrenal support. And, yeah. and we, we, we restore those, and gee, the, these aren't so bad. Well, literally, this man's life was saved. Absolutely. By coming to you and finding out what he, what he had to find out. And so, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I know God led him to, to you somehow, some way, but people need to do this. They need to understand. I mean, they suffer so much, and people die, and they really don't know what's going on. Right. And it's a shame. And that's what our show is for, right. to enlighten people about these things, that there are mm -hmm. other ways of healing. Absolutely. You know, it, it's just... The mouth is a big area that really needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And so if, if, uh, if, and I just want to share with the audience that if you think there's a tooth or a problem in your mouth and, and you keep going to the dentist, then find another dentist. Keep going until someone will address that issue for you because if it's there and you're experiencing discomfort, even though he says, look, I've x-rayed it, I've x-rayed it three times, and you're still having pain, there's a reason for the pain, and that's what pain is about. It's a signal. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not something we have to endure. It's telling us something, and so we should listen to it and honor that. Mm -hmm. And so I want to validate that if you think you have a problem there, then keep going until you find someone who will address it. Absolutely. Well, you know, I'll tell you, we really need to have you back. 
Yeah. We need to have you back, yeah. Oh, definitely. We've only got two more minutes. <laughs> Can you believe it? I'm just getting started. I know. I know. I That's know. what I'm this saying. We're gonna, so we're gonna, after the show, we're going to make some dates here because uh, there's Maybe so many interesting things. we can touch a little bit about environmental factors. What are yeah. some of the things we haven't discussed tonight that you think could add, you yeah, know, just stress a little Okay, uh, to environmental factors include uh, if someone's house is, if their basement's moldy. And so if, they, if they've had, and they say, well, I only flooded once, that's sufficient. Oh, yeah. And if it floods on a regular basis every spring, then you have mold. A quick, simple fix, for, or at least to understand if that's a problem for you, is if people go away for a weekend and they say, gee, I felt great all the time we were away. I come home, and two days later, I'm back on the, oh, I got a headache, I got this, I got that. Then chances are there's something to do with the house. And so it's just this history thing, paying attention to, playing a little detective, about that okay yeah. so that's one environmental Talk issue about expensive problems to fix though Ooh. well it can be sometimes they're relatively simple to fix um, and you know it's it's just an issue that needs to yeah. be addressed and there are companies out there that are dealing with that so right. and it's really on the horizon now people are able to companies are coming in to deal right. with that other environmental issues are uh, other metals all right so uh, we talked about cadmium a little bit we talked about mercury um, uh, another one I see frequently often in the fall is arsenic and uh, that will often be showing up if it's a short term seasonal thing like that. I often see that with people that have been eating a lot of apples. It's harvest time from the fall for oh apples, so goodness. they start buying the bags of apples, and those apples are sprayed, oh, sprayed. with this arsenic poison. Oh, lovely. lovely. I've also, I've also chickens, heard they, yeah. they inject into chickens to plump them up. Um, they might. They yeah, do that. that really but it's so it's so the, the metals become an issue. Um, if a man's involved in, in some sort of industri industrial thing, the metals could be an issue there. We look for those kinds of things. Um, just plain old household cleaners could be an issue for people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so any type of chemical exposure that you think a hair colorings, mm -hmm. uh, makeup, makeup's a big one uh, for lead. And 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 the the. Uh, so that's another allowed. issue. We can right. talk about there how to. There's a simple, can, quick test for that. As you well. can get tested for these things. I remember I had it once. My hair. Right. right. Hair Without analysis any color on it, and the hair analysis can tell you what's. Yeah. That's hair a, analysis that's one a very method. good thing to have done, yeah. audience. A, yeah. It's a very to get good. a hair analysis, and you can find out all the different metals, right? That's a good. That's one good way. Mm -hmm. um, there's a 24-hour urine test you can do that might require a challenge, etc. So there's there's several methods that will work. Um, Kinesiologically, okay. we can pick up on it quickly, and then we can go into deeper tests later on. All right, well, it's the time to say bye. Oh, oh I wow. can't believe it. I, I, I thought it's like five minutes ago we got started. That's how it feels we to did. me. <laughs> you know, no. it just feels that way. Whew. Well, we have to it's say bye, subject. and we have to thank you so much for being here. My and pleasure. You will be back. Thank you. you thank he you. will be we'll back. Get your information up Okay, you can viewers. take that to the bank. He'll be back. <laughs> okay, so we're going to put up some information now on how to reach Dr. Sylvester. To reach Dr. Sylvester, uh, you just he has a phone number, 860-923-0437. Okay. And for information about this show or any of our past shows and to find out when our shows will be playing in your area or if you have any questions you may have for us, you can email us at healoutsidethebox at yahoo.com or call Rosemary, me, at 203-627-7966 or Tracy at 203-232-3405. And you may now reach us on Facebook. Yay, Do you have any questions or, or any discussions you'd like to have? Get we really Facebook. would love to have a conversation on, yes. online with healing all Healing outside so. the box. Heal outside the box, isn't it, or healing? How do we put it? Healing. Healing, healing outside, outside the, the box. box on Facebook. Okay. And we have a quote for tonight. What was that? That was our thing. Don't worry. Okay. And now... The quote for tonight is, Touch the earth gently with love and respect. Bring gratitude into your interactions with nature, the plants, animals, and humans who make up your world. Take a few moments every day to send love to the earth, the ground you walk on, and all her creatures. Feel the love flowing back into you. Mother Earth is blessing your gift of love and returning love tenfold. Respect the Earth and all the animal, nature, and mineral kingdoms, as well as your brothers and sisters. Thank you so Thanks much for, for joining, joining us. us. Good night. Have a good night. As you look out through the window.